Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of John Has Trust Issues, where I discuss issues related to zero trust and authorization in a few minutes. My name is John Martinez, and I'm the technical evangelist over at Strong DM. And my trust issues stem from that robotic vacuum that's just going all over the house, but always seems to chase me around the house, trying to eat my toes or something. I know the dog and the cat really hate that vacuum. Anyway, so let's get on to today's subject, and I'm talking about the XZ Utils backdoor that was discovered in, in uh, one of the compression in the, in the XZ compression library on Linux. And oh my goodness, uh, where do I start with this one? Um, so much happening with this event, with this incident. First, uh, it, it's really all about trust, and really, uh, you know, that that's a huge part of the reason why I bring it up. Uh, in in my uh, in my John has trust issues episode here is because there's such a big human element to this uh, this incident uh, this particular back door. So first of all, just a little bit of background: the XZ project, XZ Utils project, or lib lib LZMA, uh, is so critical to Linux. Um, it's so critical that it's uh, actually linked uh, to System D which for us, uh, Linux, old Unix, Graybeards is in it, basically. I mean, it's the, the core of the operating system. And it really only had one maintainer. I mean, that, that's what's so amazing about this. Um, the Linux gods decided that, you know, it, having one maintainer for such a critical but un, un, uncelebrated part of the operating system needed more than one contributor to it. So uh, somebody decided to step up and become also a contributor to this. But get this, this contributor was gaining the trust of the project for two years. And they even contributed fixes. Now that's the long game. We don't know whether this, uh, this contributor was a nation state actor. There's some suspicion around that. Uh, but we do know that they were gaining the trust up to the point where they eventually brought in the back door. Uh, it wasn't, from what we read, what I've read so far, it wasn't actually part of the, the core part of the library code itself, but it was part of CMake. And it just built, and, and really at the end of the day, that this was uh, so insidious and so pervasive and so under the view of a lot of people that were actually bringing this library into uh, the distributions, the Linux distributions. Now, what happened is that a Postgres developer over at Microsoft named Andres Freund, and I'm, I'm sure I'm, uh, I'm butchering the name, so uh, apologies to Andres about that. But Andres happened to uh, stumble across an issue where SSH was just a little bit slow. Um, we're talking, you know, a little bit less than 600 milliseconds uh, slow uh, for an SSH session. And that's when Andres started digging into the uh, the issue, starting to try to figure out why is my SSH session uh, so slow? And so digging and digging, digging. Now remember, Andres is a Postgres developer, so not a security person per se, but eventually was able to follow the trail to where the compression library uh, was uh, was linked to system D. And in some distribution, system D is uh, linked to uh, open SSH server, uh, and and the, and so it went right. And so at the end of the day, the backdoor allowed uh, uh, remote execution, remote access to SSH servers, uh, and and that really is where the crux of the technical part of the issue is. But really, you know, at the end of the day, we're talking about the human element. Just again, I'll, I'll use this word again: the insidiousness, insidiousness uh, of of this particular method of getting in, being around for two years, contributing valid code, valid fixes uh, to the project. I mean, it, it was just really such a crazy operation. I think the saving grace though here was that it didn't make it into any of the actual release Linux distributions. We were, were talking about only pre-release or version.next parts of the distribution. And we do know that Fedora, Debian, Arch Linux, etc., cetera, uh, and eventually the government, and I'm talking about CISA here, uh, they issued critical alerts on the 29th, shortly after Andres discovered the, the, the back door. But 
Wow. I mean, the, this really is that crazy. So um, a couple of the a couple of the articles we'll link to uh, in the comments and the notes here for the video. But really, at the end of the day, um, this could have been a bad one. The internet really could have melted down. I mean, I think a lot of us in this uh, in this Linux and security world really are say, sounding the alarm bells. And you know, there's a much bigger topic here that we can discuss, that we can have discussions around. But definitely, it all points back to the human element of this. Things like you know, more than one maintainer to a Linux project, a core Linux project more than one maintainer to any open source uh, project, really, at the end of the day. And um, at the end, also part of this is an element of, are we asking as corporations, are we asking as an industry as a whole, uh, asking too much from our open source developers, which by the way, most of them are volunteers, right? Are we asking too much of our volunteers where we're demanding, and really at the end, of the, we, we gotta rethink this because Linux is so key and so core to, a lot of different things are in our industry, but really we dodged the bullet. And and just just as an aside, I really love what some of the distributions are calling their patches to this. CISA called for a rollback uh, in the CVE. It also calls for a rollback as well. But I really like what we've done here, where we're patching pre a known state where the backdoor was at that we think uh, that's version five four five dot one. Uh, and uh, I, I just saw one of the one of the one of the patch links that said that the new the new name of the patch or the roll forward, which is really a rollback, is five six one plus really five dot four dot five dot one. It really is a rollback. So we dodged the compression apocalypse. It could have happened. How do I mitigate it? You know, and you're thinking, you know, in practically in my environment, how do I mitigate something like this from happening? Again, the key here is open SSH server. So what does that look like? What does a mitigation for this particular issue look like? And let's go over a couple of things here. You know, number one uh, goes without saying, update your Linux boxes like now, especially if you have Linux boxes that are using up and coming releases. You know, some of us do like to live on the bleeding edge, you know, definitely this is one area where if you are running a future version or a pre-release version of a Linux distribution, definitely patch. Uh, next, move away from SSH bastion hosts. And, and you know, this is being being at my job here at Strong DM, we're huge believers of this where, you know, you don't need bastion hosts anymore. There's so many issues that happen with bastion hosts, namely, port 22 open to the world. If that rings a bell, uh, you'll know that, you know, this particular backdoor could have gotten you if you did have uh, a port 22 bastion host open to the world for sure. Uh, and uh, finally, don't expose your credentials. Uh, I'm not talking just about usernames and passwords. I'm talking about private keys. I'm, uh, if someone were to, to pop your, your SSH server without an invite, they, they happen to exercise this particular backdoor. Uh, I mean, they would have been snooping around for other things, and Bastion Host definitely is ripe for that. Uh, even if you encrypt the encrypt the uh, the the actual credentials, etc., it, it it would have been a, a bad problem for you. Uh, so really, uh, those three things are, are a good start. Uh, I'm gonna link in in the video as well an article, a blog that I wrote about about the uh, about the backdoor. So definitely read that as well. Read a lot of the other links. Uh, including the email thread that happened between Andres and, and some others. Uh, very interesting reading for you to educate yourself on it and figure out a little bit more of what really this XZUtils, lib, LX, MLA, uh, LMNOP, <laughs> compression library backdoor is all about. And just really quickly, a production note here for me to talk to you about. No penguins were injured in the making of this episode, just so you know. So that's it. There's another episode of John Has Trust Issues. Uh, this episode was brought to you by StrongDM, the modern access management platform that enables continuous zero trust authorization for all of your infrastructure. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.